uncertain of his sister's fate, a boy enters limbo. This is the game's description and the only detail about the story available before starting. You wake up in a barren forest, alone, at first. One of the big reasons fans have come up with so many theories regarding Limbo's enigmatic story is that those who worked on the game offer no definitive explanation. Gamesutra.com got a rare in-depth interview with the game's director, Arndt Jensen, and the studio's CEO, Dino Patti. The two revealed why Limbo is deliberately ambiguous. I think it's great when you're done playing it, you're still thinking about it. It's not supposed to be, it's like that and that's how it is. I hate that in everything, in movies and books. All those people who enjoyed the open ending, that makes me happy, because it was supposed to be an open ending. What it means, I don't want to talk about. You told me that you think somebody got close, yeah, very close, to things we've been talking about in the office, things only Arndt has in his head. When asked if it is really scary that somebody would correctly interpret his vision, Arndt responded with, yeah, it is because then there's too many clues. It has to be... And then he falls silent. So while Limbo is open-ended, Arndt has his own vision and left clues for us to find our own. As nothing is explicit, when we try to piece together the story, we can't rule out anything. Some aspects of the game might be deliberate story beats and carry weight, like the spider or the hotel sign. Some things might just be gameplay mechanics, like the machine guns and gravity switch. Or they could be integral to the story while the spider and hotel sign are not. So taking this into consideration, we have quite a few elements to interpret. First of all, we have the game's name. Limbo was conceptualized by medieval theologian Catholics to explain what happens to children who die with original sin, Adam and Eve eating the apple in the Garden of Eden, before they were able to be baptized and forgiven. Parents were worried their infants were being sent to hell unjustly, and this notion of Limbo was a way of putting them at ease. Limbo has also been theorized as a place for those who died in God's friendship, but also sinned during their life. Somebody who is not good enough for heaven or even purgatory, but not evil enough for hell. They must wait for redemption by Jesus Christ. That would be the religious aspect of Limbo, but it has been interpreted across many different works, including Dante's Divine Comedy, in which it is described as beautiful and somber. In the Artemis Fowl series of books, Inception and The Matrix Revolutions, it is a place in between worlds where people can be trapped indefinitely. Also, Limbo is a silly dance where people bend at impossible angles to shuffle under a bar. I don't think this will help us understand the story though. Uncertain of his sister's fate, a boy enters Limbo. This can be taken two ways. Either the boy is entering Limbo voluntarily to save his sister as he fears for her safety, or something unfortunate happened to the two of them and the boy enters Limbo without knowing what awaits either of them. The butterfly is seen at various points and often guides the boy in the right direction. It is a small detail that many players will miss or forget about once the game is over, but it is present at enough important moments to be significant. The forest bookends the journey and at numerous times infiltrates other settings. Its vast empty space can be taken as peaceful, offering a respite for the boy, or it could be eerie with only the sound of footsteps to keep the boy company. There is the boat which the boy uses to cross a sizable mass of water early on, a symbolic crossing into the unknown, perhaps. Bear traps are a constant threat in the beginning of the game and the first gruesome death most players suffer. A little bit later, these traps are used to trick the spider and they are also used by the people attacking the boy. The oversized spider is terrifying. After the first encounter, the spider will cocoon the boy, slowly hunt him and almost trap the boy in a corner. However, the boy uses a boulder to crush the spider and several minutes later uses the spider's body to his advantage in crossing a bed of spikes. 
people attack the boy at different points during the first quarter of the game. They try to trick the boy into believing they are the malicious spider, they roll burning objects at him, and one of them is infected with the mind controlling slug and it dies, which serves as an introduction to that particular mechanic. The people also set up an intricate trap, and for the final encounter, several of them charge at the boy with poison darts before all of them are killed. What you might have already noticed is how the boy is the only person whose eyes are visible. Everyone else, including his sister, lacks that feature. The eyes on the boy indicate two states of being, alive and dead. Considering Limbo in mythology is part of the afterlife, this could be seen as those present in Limbo have eyes, those absent do not. While the boy is unable to swim, he does use rain to his advantage by flooding gaps he must cross or causing objects to rise with the water allowing him to reach higher places. Speaking of higher places, multiple times the boy finds himself on the rooftops, often sliding down the side of them as tiles cascade to the ground below. The neon hotel sign is imposing, deadly, and has an arrow the boy follows. It makes an appearance about a third of the way into the game and then again in the final 10 minutes, while flipped on its side. The boy starts in the forest, then goes indoors, to a sewer area, then giant mechanisms are present, and then back to the forest. Gravity is a tool the boy uses to navigate the world. It is introduced slowly through the moving of huge cogs turning over the level, before the boy has access to switches that instantaneously flip the world. Mind controlling slugs force the boy to change direction. This can be undone by walking into a bright light. And the only way to get rid of the slugs is to feed it to these chomping creatures. Lethal machine guns make an appearance in the final quarter of the game, and unlike most mechanics, the boy learns to manipulate them to his benefit immediately, using one machine gun to destroy the other. After completing all the puzzles, the boy breaks through this pane of glass immersed in light. While doing so, he closes his eyes before landing in a place quite similar to the one where he started his journey. In the final moments, the boy approaches his sister while she is doing something to the ground. When she senses his presence, she jolts upright, and the game ends. During the credits, the background fades in, revealing flies hovering where the boy and girl were last seen. The ladder is rotten, with its lowest step barely hanging on, and the grass is now overgrown. There is also a structure that was out of sight in the final scene. It too looks to be in bad shape. Finally, we have death. Constant and horrific death. This world is infested by it. The boy died in a forest and made it his own personal hell. His fears are animated and exaggerated. Those being spiders, heights, swimming, being controlled and other people. Each of those fears could have been brought on by a traumatic event in his life. He fears other people because he was bullied, swimming is struggle, and the spider is the slow creep of death. The mechanical change in setting is him having to face a place he despises, the big city. These rotating cogs symbolize the way the city changed him, much to his disgust. Only after facing all these fears can he break out of limbo. Some religions speculate that you can only move on to the afterlife after finding where you have been buried, exactly where his sister is at the end. The boy passes the test of limbo, finds his final resting spot, and is allowed to say one last goodbye to his sister before moving on to heaven. The boy and his sister were playing in their treehouse and when it collapsed, they both fell and died. Uncertain of his sister's fate, a boy enters limbo. He sets out to find her. Along the way, the spider represents fear, tribal characters represent loneliness as he is always the outcast, rain represents depression, cogs represent structure and progress, much like the treehouse, the crash and subsequent slow motion fall mirror the final moments of the boy's life, something the sister also had to experience. Upon seeing her, the boy and sister come to the same startling conclusion. Yes, they are both dead. They both go to heaven as the final scene has a white light shining on where they were. 
The boy and sister are near death after falling out of the treehouse. While in a coma, he travels through Limbo, letting go of the life he had in order to find his sister. Everything in Limbo symbolizes their time together. The treehouse is their childhood, the spider their fears, cogs and broken down construction represent the place they were born, and the people represent everyone around them. With everything being so hostile, it is possible the boy and girl had a traumatic and depressing life. Despite that, they always had each other, which is why he is so determined to find her. Smashing through the glass at the end represents him letting go of his fears and past. Only by doing this can he be reunited with his sister before passing on to the afterlife together. The boy is stuck in limbo after dying, perhaps from drowning, snared in a bear trap or any other of the many ways he is killed in the game. While he may have found his sister at the end, it is another false moment, just like earlier. The game ends suddenly because there is no resolution or salvation. The boy is dead and will repeat limbo forever. The boy and his family were moving house. Before he was able to put on his seatbelt, their car was hit by another vehicle, which is why he is afraid of other people. After being hit, the car crashes into a lake, explaining the water, and he wakes up in limbo. The boxes around the place are moving boxes. He may also have been flung through the windshield, which is what the final puzzle represents. Only after he overcomes all obstacles can he see his beloved, grieving sister one last time beneath the treehouse they used to play in before moving on to heaven. While traveling together, the boy crashed and his sister smashed through the windshield and died. Consumed by depression, he takes his own life and enters limbo voluntarily. He reverts back to being a child as life was simpler and happier when he and his sister would play together. The spider represents fear. The people attacking the boy represent the persecution of others for causing his sister's death. He is constantly challenged and must break through the glass to feel what she felt. Repeatedly dying is also part of his punishment. When he finally finds his sister, she is playing under the treehouse, a favorite place of their childhood. His sister goes to heaven, but he doesn't because he took his own life, a mortal sin. What gives credence to this theory are the boy's glowing eyes. Everyone else is stuck, only he is there with a purpose, to rescue his sister. As her eyes are also not glowing, she doesn't realize she is dead. He is traveling through her life, not his. He encounters her fears, her faults, eventually meeting her in a place she takes comfort. When she senses his presence, she realizes she is indeed dead and joins him in heaven. This is a spectacular theory by Jake van der End. I apologize if I mispronounced her last name, who thinks Limbo is a wordless retelling of Dante's Inferno, which opens with, Midway along the journey of our life, I woke to find myself in a dark wood, for I had wandered off from the straight path. How hard it is to tell what it was like. This wood of wilderness, savage and stubborn, which in the very thought renews the fear. A bitter place. Death could scarce be bitterer. But if I would show the good that came of it, I must talk about things other than the good. How I entered there, I cannot truly say. And everywhere I looked, the beast was there. Jake theorizes that the spider represents the Cerberus, who guards the third circle of hell, gluttony. His reasons are, it is the first, and only, huge monster you ever see, just like the Cerberus in Inferno. In order to defeat the spider, you have to roll a giant boulder into its head. In order to get past the Cerberus, Dante had to hurl wet earth into its mouths. The act of introducing earth to the beast in order to pass is essentially the same. Very soon after you defeat the spider, you activate a weather machine that makes it rain. Afterwards, you flee into caves and wet marshlands. The third circle of hell is marked by brutal, icy rain, and the fifth is marked by a swampland, mirroring the transition and timing almost identically. Crossing the water in a boat at the beginning of the game ties into the idea of circular progression. Waking up in the forest, crossing Acheron, encountering the spider Cerberus in the third circle, and entering the fifth circle of swamps and anger. Remember that butterfly I mentioned earlier in the video? It could represent Virgil, 
Dante's guide through the inferno as it is seen at the beginning, several times in the middle and at the end, always moving in the direction the boy is meant to go. The fifth circle is anger, relating to the many tribesmen who are so committed to killing the boy they put themselves in danger. The city of Dees surrounds the last four circles of hell which explains the city backdrops, electrified rails, magnets and huge gears. The seventh circle of hell is violence, for this we have the automated machine guns. When they sense something in their line of fire, they shoot without question or remorse. The boy continues down the circles of hell and passes through the last two circles, fraud and treachery. Because of this, it is possible the sister was the one that killed the boy and this is a revenge story. He is dead at the start of the game, crosses the river Acheron, escapes through the circles of hell. When the sister senses her brother, she suddenly realizes her dire fate. Another possibility is that the sister has already made it through hell and is waiting for her brother before guiding him to heaven. It is a fantastic theory and I'll put a link to it in the description. Years after the release of Limbo, people still go back and forth regarding its story. With so many clues available, it is possible to come up with your own theory and have evidence to back it up. In fact, the car crash caused by the boy theory is mine. Is it the correct one? I don't know, but I enjoy the speculation. I like how others can have their own interpretation and highlight things I missed, like Jake's Dante's Inferno theory. An ambiguous story wouldn't work for all games, but some have benefited from it, like the Soul series and the ending of The Last of Us. In Limbo's case, a mere two hour game got thousands of people to spend time exchanging ideas, coming up with theories, making videos like this and reveling in the discussion. So by all means, if you have any of your own theories, please share them. And until next time, take care.